Hello, my name's Chris. This is Team Phoenix. If you like the videos on this channel, then please make sure you hit the like button and comment and subscribe to the channel. And yeah. Okay, so we have some interesting and quite personal information in the with regards to the case of Alexis Sharkey. In, in it concerns Tom Sharkey, uh, her husband, and um, who's of course quite in the spotlight at the moment. And of course, we still don't know what happened to Alexis. All we know is that she was found naked, deceased at the roadside. And this is reportedly following an argument that she'd had with her husband, Tom. Um, he has denied this. Friends of hers have also, of course, come out and said that she was scared of him. She was petrified for her life, that she was filing for a divorce. And again, Tom has denied all this. What we do know is that, according to a very close friend of Alexis, her boyfriend, had a text from Tom saying that him and Alexis had had an argument that Friday evening and she had left. She left the home, home went out and, you know, that's in the text. So why he's denying that, selling the media otherwise, I don't know, just makes him look out to be a liar. Now, what, what we have here uh is very concerning some of it is very concerning and it really does raise a lot of questions about tom's character this is a, a public document that we have got hold of this uh was filed at the lee county court in, in florida and it as i say concerns tom or thomas sharkey lexus's husband and the other party involved in this is one of tom's former wives uh, it seems that he's got more than one ex-wife as we'll come to in a moment um, but this was for a final judgment on modification of child support parenting and contact and this was a follow-up to uh, a dissolution of marriage order that had been made and here it looks like his ex-wife wanted to try and get sole resp parenting responsibility for the children and you'll see why uh, as we read through some of this some of it i'll skip over because it's just kind of formal stuff um but uh, as i say as you can see there this is thomas sharkey this is his his former wife and name obviously i blocked out for, for privacy reasons um so just just to quickly recap on just what we know about the, about the, the case with Alexis um, we know that the last time a friend spoke to her was kind of 6 p.m. ish on Friday that was Black Friday 27th of November um, they were very concerned because she which they hadn't heard from her couldn't get hold of her she wasn't posting on social media like she normally would and it's understood that around sort of 12 hours went by they a friend went round early morning on Saturday knocked on her apartment door nobody answered uh, that's when they, they filed her missing and of course shortly after that her her body was found by uh, a city worker of course at the roadside um, we do know that uh, Alexis was uh, originally from o Odessa, Odessa in, in Texas and um, she used to work at a, a restaurant called Twin Peaks and we know that Tom used to be a regular at that restaurant. Alexis was going through a hard time apparently with her ex-fiance at the time. And this is according to friends and Tom um, was, was kind of there for her. And that's how they how they met. Um, that they traveled all over the, the Southwest of America for, for quite a long time. Apparently that she moved to Colorado for several months back in, in 2019 as well. Um, they got engaged in June 2019, they got married in December of last year, and they moved to Houston in January. So, just going back to this, so this, as I say, this is concerning Tom and his former wife, um, one of his former wives, and she wants soul, she wanted soul parenting responsibility for the children so this came before trial before the court on october 20th 2009 so it is 11 years old um 
you know, we're just putting the information out there for you. So this is a public document, so you can make up your own opinion. Each of the parties appeared in person before the court. The court heard the testimony of the parties and witnesses, sworn and examined in open court. Having considered all the evidence presented, having reviewed the file and been otherwise fully advised, this court finds. And this is the order sought to be modified. So, okay, so section one, each of the parties are seeking to modify a judgment entitled Final Judgment of Dissolution of Marriage. I have seen that document. I've got that document. It's a very formal document, though. There isn't really any specifics in that document that I can see. And that was entered herein on January 15th, 2008. The father is seeking to have the court fashion a parenting plan based upon his residence in Texas rather than in Florida. So obviously at some point, Tom had moved from Florida to Texas. The mother is requesting the court to grant her sole parental responsibility for the minor children and to restrict the father's contact with the children to supervised contact. Each of the parties initially requested the court adjust child support pursuant to the guidelines. So as you can see there, they had two children together, one girl, one boy, and for obviously for privacy reasons, their names are blurred out. Okay, there's the current information required by the Depository for Child Support Purposes. And you can just see from there what I've left that um, Tom used to reside in Odessa, Texas at that time. And that is also where Alexis was from. So obviously that's where they met. And you can see there that this ex-wife of Tom's used to work at the Sheriff's Office. Uh, a couple of people have commented um, on the channel that his ex-wife was in law enforcement and this I think clarifies that. Um, certainly she, she worked for the sheriff's office. Um, as I say there was uh, another wife after this as you'll see in a moment before Alexis. Uh, and then there's just some formal jurisdictional issues. Um, again that just goes on um, and you can pause and read this hopefully if, if you want to um, okay so here are, the, here are the parts that are very important that I think we need to be raised and you know to me this certainly throws a lot of uh, shade if you like on Tom's character um, certainly his behavior in the past towards his ex-wife and towards his own children so section 7 it says the court finds that there has been a substantial material and unanticipated change in circumstances since entry of the judgment entitled final judgment of dissolution of marriage previously entered herein in January 15th 2008 which warrants a modification that the court further finds is in the best interests of the children Section eight, the father's family members, so this is Tom's own family members, testified to his changed mental and emotional condition, to his threat of suicide, and to his detrimental actions toward and with the children. The father has relocated to Texas from Florida. The original parenting plan is unworkable. The father has used the children to attempt to force the mother to make agreements with him that she believed were not in the children's best interest. The father, in addition, has threatened the mother and involved her employer by delivering sensitive pictures to the employer in order to punish her for failing to give in to his threats. Sounds almost like blackmail, doesn't it? In total, except for the stability of the mother's home, the circumstances which existed at the time of the marital settlement agreement and final judgment which relate to these children have all substantially changed. It is notable that even though much of the evidence in this matter came from relatives of the father, those relatives obviously care deeply for him, are genuinely concerned about him and have great care for the children involved in this matter. That's interesting. So that's members of Tom's own family that, that testified to his changed mental state. And he was obviously threatening suicide at that time. 
and obviously what's concerning is the detrimental actions towards and with his children um, as I say this is his own family that are testifying this okay so going on section 9 is talking about findings relative to the best interests of the children and it's parental responsibility and this is obviously all that what the court judged have judged on these sort of sections so the court finds that shared parental responsibility would be detrimental to the minor children and that mother should have sole parental responsibility of the minor children and that this is in the best interest of the minor children so the court awarded uh, the mother Tom's ex-wife she was awarded sole parental responsibility of the minor children section 10 parenting plan the court finds that the provisions contained in this judgment including the time sharing schedule set forth below constitute a parenting plan intended to govern the relationship between the parties relating to the decisions to be made regarding the children 11 factors the court makes the following findings a fact concerning the best interests of the children relative to parental responsibility the parenting plan and the time sharing schedule ordered and uh, i'm sure you'll find some of this very interesting okay so it's headed the demonstrated capacity and disposition of each parent to facilitate and encourage a close and continuing parent-child relationship to honor the time sharing schedule and to be reasonable when changes are required the evidence indicates that the mother has made concerted efforts to portray the father in a favorable light in front of the children she has honored the time sharing schedule and complied with court orders the father has not he failed to return the children from summer visitation ordered by judge Shenko, pursuant to the court's instruction the causes the children to be emotionally upset during this period and to act out verbally against the mother both during their time with him and upon their return section b is headed the anticipated division of parental responsibilities after the litigation including the extent to which parental responsibilities will be delegated to third parties this factor favors the mother she has consistently been the nurturing parent the father on the other hand has delegated his parenting responsibilities to his current wife so obviously he had another wife at this point so in other words alexis is at least wife number three for tom during the summer contact time with the father he did not take vacation time from work as he had represented to the court section c the demonstrated capacity and disposition of each parent to determine consider and act upon the needs of the child as opposed to the needs or desires of the parent the fact also favors the mother the father encourages the children to be angry at the mother to be disrespectful and to use forceful and vulgar language to force the mother to agree with the father's demands section d the length of time the child has lived in a stable satisfactory environment and the desirability of maintaining continuity this factor favors the mother she has provided a stable home and social environment for the children while the father has engaged in other activities with his current wife so he seemed more concerned with shenanigans with his new wife rather than taking care of his children section e the geographic viability of the parenting plan with special attention paid to the needs of school age children and the amount of time to be spent traveling to effectuate the parenting plan children doing well in school have a number of members of their extended family living in the area mother provides access to the father's family members to the children this factor favors the mother doesn't seem to be much that uh, many factors favoring the father at this point again uh, i'll let you read that again a section there that factor favors the mother of course we are more concerned with tom in this particular case 
the capacity and disposition of each parent to protect the child from the ongoing litigation is demonstrated by not discussing the litigation with the child, not sharing documents or electronic media related to the litigation with the child, and refraining from disparaging comments about the other parent to the child. This factor weighs heavily against the father. He has outrageously involved and engaged the children in the current litigation. He has had them act out against their mother in order to try to force her to make agreements with him, which she did not believe were in the children's best interest. In addition, the father followed through with a threat to tell the children of the mistreatment of the mother as a child by a family member. This action was detrimental to the emotional welfare of the children and totally a use of them by the father to punish the mother for failing to make agreements with him. Yes, it kind of speaks for itself, a lot of this, doesn't it? There seems to be a lot of emotional abuse here, using his children and almost blackmailing his wife into uh, to agreeing to his demands. Um, this does not make great reading. Um, and it's just saying there that the court finds... Um, substantial change in circumstances obviously since entry of the final judgment of dissolution of marriage and that it does warrant a modification of child support and it basically then goes on just to talk about financial income um, this I thought was interesting it says that the court finds that there is currently Retroactive child support due and a child support arrearage owing of $11,079.59, including statutory interests, significant uh, child support owing for the children. And it goes on to say that mothers shall have sole parental responsibility with respect to the children, so she was awarded so responsibility it just goes on to give the rights that the mother would have as the sole parent and um, and it confirms here that it will be supervised access for tom to his children uh, until further order of the court all time sharing between the children and father shall be supervised and it's to be supervised by tom's mother or his sister um, so yeah, he only had supervised access after this to his children. And most of what follows is just formalities. Um, showed you the main points, what I, what I wanted to to put out there really. So to just in, in summary, so this is a this is a an ex wife of Tom's. It appears that um there were two wives before Alexis. Um, so Alexis is at least wife number three. This here could have been possibly, of course, Tom's first wife. We don't know. But uh, this was certainly an ex-wife. And it's concerning because it, it really does throw into question, like I say, Tom's character, the way that he treated his ex-wife and his children. And obviously, given the circumstances, um, of of what's happened to Alexis, the fact that she appeared to have an argument with Tom just before she left the home, and then b b before she was found deceased, is obviously extremely worrying. When you when you add that into to what's found in in these this court document, as I say, this is old. This is eleven years old, but um, you know it it doesn't change the fact that. Um, That was the way that he sought to treat his ex-wife and his children. So just to reiterate, this uh, modification um, to the, the, the parenting of the children was based on, um, you know, substantial and, and unanticipated changes in circumstances. And as I say, the father's family members testified to 
Tom's changed mental and emotional condition, his threat of suicide and his detrimental action toward and with the children. Um, it clearly states that the father, Tom, used the children to attempt to force the mother to make agreements with him that she believed were not in the children's best interest. He threatened his ex-wife and involved her employer, sending sensitive pictures to her employer in order to punish her for failing to give in to his threats. So that's very controlling behaviour, isn't it? Very mentally abusive, emotionally abusive behaviour, blackmail almost. Um, and, that, that, and that's very concerning. And when you add that up to the fact that you know, Alexis was saying that she was very frightened of him and, uh, and was fearing for her life and was filing for divorce. Things start to make a little bit more sense. And, you know, there were there were other things in here. Nothing was really ever found in his favor. favor. He always seemed to be using the children um, as a kind of emotional, uh, in emotional blackmail towards his, his ex-wife. And almost trying to turn the children against their mother um, was was owing a lot in child support. Was even delegating his parental responsibilities to his to his new wife, his current wife. Didn't really seem to uh, have his priorities straight, really, when it came to his family. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, I think it's very very interesting that, that when this this information has come to light. And um, it's certainly something to consider as we kind of move forward and trying to, to piece together this case and just what's happened to Alexis and hopefully her family, uh, friends and family can, can get some answers. And I can only um, again offer our condolences to, to her family. It's an awful thing for her to be found like that. It's just uh, so heartbreaking, so degrading for her to be found naked like that at the side of the road. Can't imagine what they are going through. And I just hope that uh, justice will be swift in in, uh, in finding out who exactly was responsible um, for, fight, for Alexis ending up being found like that.